Mama Onyato tonight. House of Representatives to investigate attempt by DSS operatives to re-arrest Revolution Now convener Omoyele Shoure at the Federal High Court premises in Abuja. National Human Rights Commission challenges citizens on the protection of human rights, says young people should demand accountability from their leaders. Senate to probe Central Bank of Nigeria and Nigeria Interbank Settlement System over alleged failure to remit 20 trillion Naira stamp duties revenue to the Federation account. And U.S. House Judiciary Committee unveils formal impeachment charges against U.S. President Donald Trump. On business news tonight, President Muhammadu Buhari appoints Central Bank Governor, Deputy Governor Edward Adamu as Chairman of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria to replace Moise Banire. And on sports news tonight, reigning European champions Liverpool FC scale Salzburg hurdle to reach the knockout phase of the UEFA Champions League. Today directed its relevant committees to investigate the invasion of the Federal High Court by the Department of State Services in the bid to re-arrest Mr. Amoyele Shoure, the convener of the Revolution Now protest. The matter was raised by the minority leader Ndudi Elumelu, who described the incident as an abuse on the sanctity of the courtroom. The lawmaker alleges that the invasion can be seen as one arm of government attempting to overpower another, which will spell doom for the country's democracy. Our correspondent Terry Ikumi reports. The Speaker of the House of Representatives arrives for Tuesday's plenary to a rather scanty chamber. After adopting the votes and proceedings, a motion of urgent public importance on the need for the House to investigate the alleged invasion of the Federal High Court by the Department of State Services while trying to rearrest revolution now protest leader Omoyele Showare is raised by the minority leader. The House is concerned that the men of the civil society claims that the unidentified marked men are agents of the Department of the State Services, DSS. A situation where one arm is seen to be overpowering another in the course of dispersing her duties will definitely spell doom for the separation of powers as a shrine in the Constitution. If a law is passed, the House mandated committees on national security, judiciary and human rights to investigate and report back in two weeks. Those in support of the motion as amended, please say aye. Those against me say nay. The eyes have it. Meanwhile, a bill sponsored by the Speaker and five other lawmakers on the need for budget discipline and accountability scales second reading, just as the lawmakers issue an ultimatum of 31st December 2019 for ministries, departments and agencies to refund all unspent budget funds to the National Treasury. Under the uh, Finance Control and Management Act, unspent money is supposed to be returned. But indeed, Constructive money meant for political projects and that are not spent were not done. They were retained by MDAs and spent illegally through violent and augmentation. The House also set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the amount of unspent constituency project funds not remitted in the last 10 years. The effort. Another bill which scales second reading is for an act to alter Section 7 of the 1999 Constitution and ensure that local governments are no longer under the control of state governors. This bill will not just only do or give the authority for the election of chairman, but at the same time, it will stop the issue of caretaker committees, caretaker chairman ad, uh, administration that that most of governors usually use it to do what they want to do. A bill for an act to so separate the office of the Attorney General of the Federation from the Minister of Justice um, also passes through second, second reading. I, Terry Ikumi, Channels no. Television I News. Meanwhile, the National Human Rights Commission is asking young Nigerians to stand up for their rights and demand accountability from the nation's leaders. The Executive Secretary of the Commission, Mr. Tony Ojuku, says young people should be empowered to stand for their rights. He was speaking after a rally to mark the 2019 International Human Rights Day in Abuja. <laughs> On the surface, the federal government ticks all the boxes when it comes to human rights protection in Nigeria. 
Nigeria is party to all nine core human rights treaties and has ratified several international and regional human rights treaties. In its 2018 report, Human Rights Watch published a long list of human rights violations in Nigeria, including Boko Haram insurgency, bandits, communal violence, and excessive use of force by security agencies. They also included illegal detention, gender-based violence, and freedom of speech. The European Union wants the federal government to take action to address the situation. The European Union stands very firm of, on the principle. Our fundamental values uh, as laid down in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the Convention, uh, the European Convention of, of Human Rights as well. And as I've stated before, we find that it is important in any democratic society for people to be able to participate as long as they seek peaceful means uh, to voice their opinion. This is a crucial component of any democracy. According to the United Nations Population Fund, 28% of Nigerian women aged 25 to 29 have experienced some form of physical violence since the age of 15. And 3 million women in the Northeast region need gender-based violence protection and response. The Human Rights Commission is insisting that young people must stand up for their rights in the country. Unless they fight for their rights, unless they know their rights, it will not be possible to fulfill the sustainable development goals. So we think that youths are a very important segment of the society and the future lies in their hands. So today is a recognition by the international community that the youth should be empowered with knowledge about their rights. The youth should demand their rights to make our leaders accountable. And if a citizen commits an offense, the law enforcement agents are entitled to try the person. But they must try the person within the law. They must respect the person's dignity. The constitution says that every citizen is innocent until proven guilty. The law enforcement agent should not, should not proceed as if somebody is already guilty before it is sanctioned by the court. That is our issue with Shore. The federal government insists that it upholds the rights of every Nigerian, but the statistics suggest otherwise. And as the call for the protection of rights continues, it appears the current government is facing the heat, particularly with the recent cases of alleged human rights violation and disrespect to court orders. More Nigerians are asking the federal government to stand by its promise to protect the rights of everyone and respect the independence of other arms of government. The federal executive under my watch will not seek to encroach on the duties and functions of the legislative and judicial arms of government. That was President Muhammad Buhari's promise to Nigerians in 2015 when he assumed leadership of the nation. will become the standard of political conduct in our country. Today, Nigerians are holding him to account on those words, especially in the wake of recent allegations of human rights abuses, disobedience of court orders and illegal detentions. This recent video seems to have fueled another round of criticisms from Nigerians, despite the denial by the Department of State Security, DSS. But the president's aides are not taking any of these allegations on their abuse of human rights to heart. As far as this country's uh, law enforcement is concerned, that video was an orchestrated uh, drama piece. It was, um, it was uh, drawn up in order to get the same the same kind of attention that you get. And Retired Colonel Sambo Dasuki, who has been in custody since December 2015, despite being granted bail by four different high court judges in Nigeria and their cause court. The leader of the proscribed Islamic movement in Nigeria, Ibrahim El Zagzaki, and his wife Zinat, have also been in detention since 2015, despite being granted bail by a federal high court in Abuja. The court ordered their immediate and unconditional release and fined the federal government 50 million naira for the incarceration of the duo. But despite that, El Zagzaki and his wife have remained in custody. Journalist Joan Dabiri made the list in July 2016 when he was reportedly detained secretly for more than two years by the DSS for alleged terrorism. He was, however, arraigned before a magistrate's court in 2018 
But no evidence was presented to the court and the case was thrown out while a separate court ordered the government to compensate Abiri with 10.5 million naira for violation of his constitutional rights. He was later re-arrested and has been in detention since. Nigerians have been demanding the release of this man and they say, if not for anything, the need to comply with the court orders. The president may also be held accountable for that promise as Nigerians wait anxiously for him to walk the talk by ensuring the enthronement of the rule of law and for him to listen to grievances of fellow Nigerians as he has promised. Now to discuss the promotion and protection of human rights in the country, I'm being joined live from Abuja by a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Akinshaya George. Thanks a lot, Prof, for joining us on the News at 10. Um, I mean, like you see there... Th thank you very much. Thank you. A number thank of you. issues have been thank raised, you. but how concerned are you about Nigeria's human rights track record today? Are you worried? Um, Nigerian human rights today must be situated in the context of the uh, global struggle for the realization of human rights. You know, human rights are ideals which hold civilized society together. Human rights are the foundations of peace, justice, and development. And they are at the core of the sustainable development goals. So it is important that government must, through its actions, demonstrate clearly that human rights are inalienable and that government actions and policies must be informed by the need to respect the rights of all peoples, all Nigerians, regardless of their um, religion, ethnicity, uh, political persuasion, persuasion uh, 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 or, you know, or circumstances of birth, yes. So, I, I mean, you, you've made that, you've talked about that, but are you seeing that? You, you've talked about the need for human rights and, uh, you know, being, them being at the core of the SDGs. And my question to you is that looking at yes. the track record, um, are you seeing evidence of that, that the rights are being respected? Um, there are so many rights. You know, we talk about the right to life, the right to education, you know, um, we talk about so many rights. We have civil and political rights, social and economic rights. There are some aspects of rights in Nigeria that appear, you know, to be threatened. For example, you know, the right to um, demonstrate, the right to express yourself through public demonstrations. But other rights, such as the right to education, in fact, even right to education, because if you look at the theme of the um, 20, 2019 uh, Global Human Rights Day, it's about youths standing up for human rights. You know, but so many youths, so many youths do not even have access to education. So Sorry, it is Prof, important me, that we, we if, if I could only um, interject at this point to just um, bring you back to um, one of the rights that uh, we we're actually looking at today, um, for instance, the right yes. to be granted bail. If you look at the judiciary being an instrument essential for the protection of that right, you found you know, pronouncements being ignored. Should the judiciary be looking to do a little bit more to ensure that that right is protected? Quickly, Prof. The, the judiciary has done its bit. I mean, they have given orders. It is for the government to comply with the orders of court. And if there's any reason why the government will not comply with orders of court, security reasons or whatever, it should be made known to the appropriate quarters. You know, when these processes are filed in court, government should be there, government lawyers should be there to, say, to, to state why some judgments, you know, should not be given. But if they are not able to convince the court, the court is the, is the, is the, is the, is the defender of the rights of the public. If we are not able to convince the court why certain people should not be released, I do not think is consistent with democratic principles to continue to hold such people. Well, see, Human rights like... are inalienable. Human rights 
pertain to human beings by virtue of their humanity. And human rights are the, civil, are the, are the, you know, are the ligaments which hold civilized societies together. So government must live up to its commitment by respecting human rights and ensuring that where the courts have made pronouncements, government must respect those pronouncements. All right, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Akishaya George, thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10 tonight. Thank you. And in part two, after the break, police undertake forensic investigation into the killing of the wife of the managing director of logistics company Maersk in Lagos.